Hello everyone, this is Bob Tremore. Today we're going to take an excursion, a little road trip down Peloton's road to Digital Valhalla. Uh, as we know, Barry and company are looking to take Peloton really digital first in the future. Less emphasis on hardware, more emphasis on digital. But the end goal really is to continue to get to 100 million subs. Now this was a goal that John had and he set out for himself and he said in the x years we're going to get to 100 million dollars 100 million subs and if you look at the internal hires which i do on a daily basis this line 100 million subs is still in a lot of the hiring materials you know as they're attracting new talent we're on our road to get to 100 million subs so barry and company still have a plan to get to 100 million subs but it doesn't appear that hardware is something that they'll be emphasizing. Barry's very much digital first, and that's kind of what he's looking to do. So we're going to take a little road trip down a theoretical road on how to get to 100 million subs today. So we're going to mix a little levity today with, with what we got going on. Some things are good, some things are bad, but I kind of use the channel as an experimentation platform, if you will. And we're going to kind of go down conceivably what they may be thinking of inside the four walls of New York headquarters. Um, I've got a windy road ahead for Peloton in digital, and we're going to visit various Candyland locations along the road. The first one we have up is Amazon Acres. I think we all know what this is. Probably don't have to spend a lot of time on it here, but recently we know Peloton has visited Amazon Acres. Uh, this, uh, if you don't uh, recognize this. This is from uh, Back to the Future and that uh, Pleasantville-esque area they went to. So Barry is viewing Amazon as a little bit of a place to park his inventory to decrease the amount of hardware dependence that Peloton has, along with less reliance on pre-core manufacturing, less reliance on tonic manufacturing, uh, less reliance on various things that they had laid out, the Peloton Output Park, and now they're kind of offloading to Amazon. Will they offload to other areas, again, with their digital aspect? We don't know. Will they go to Target? Will they go to Sam's? Will they go to Costco? Will they go to Walmart? But certainly, this is where they've pulled up the car for now, and they are seemingly very happy, and I've actually been tracking the ranking. The Peloton bike has actually been steadily increasing. It, it couldn't decrease, right? It started at, well, they do the top 50, so it started at 50 or below 50. Uh, last time I checked, well, I'd seen it at 45, 40, 35, and I think now it's right around 25, 24. So it's, it's going up, but again, there's not a lot of one-to-one -one competition on Amazon as far as connected fitness bikes. I think there's, a, there's a, possibly a Nordic Track connected fitness device with a monitor and everything like that. There's possibly an Echelon. And I believe it's ahead of both of those. The others are kind of very, frankly, rinky-dink exercise cycle type activities. A lot of people who make the just argument that Peloton is inserting its high-quality brand amongst lesser quality items. And certainly right now at 25, 24th place in the ranking, they're high. But if you look in the ranking, the 23 items above them are like uh, $40 things, $100 things, $200 things. It, it's it's not great company to be in unless you're trying to offload inventory. So that was the first stop on Pelton's digital road. Where does Barry and company go next? Well, we've logged into Amazon Acres, Nexus Nations United. I've spoken about this previously. Digital first, again, embracing digital first. Where do we go here? We are talking about stringing up the Peloton flag and finally expanding the digital app outside of Canada, US, Australia, UK, and Germany. Getting the app out to essentially global availability. No hardware reliance. People, Peloton, we know the logistics status they're in. It's not great, right? So they're not going to be pushing out Peloton bikes and Peloton 400 pound Peloton treadmills to 
Zimbabwe, Brazil, Argentina, Egypt, Israel, Japan, China, what have you. They're going to rely on people using their own equipment and or simply just using the app to do things like yoga and running and walking, boot camps, things of that nature. But certainly amongst the highest items on Barry's checklist, and he's mentioned it as much on, on calls, on analyst calls. So was, this is nothing shocking here, but this is the direction he's taking it, right? Is embracing digital, getting the app out, which is, it's kind of a fixed cost. There's not really a, a whole large variable aspect to rolling this out nationwide. There's language support, though English, I think, English and Spanish will largely get a large amount of the population, world population. Um, they'll be able to manage with those languages. So we're not talking about uh, a heavy uplift here on rolling out digital global wide. That's our next stop. What's our next stop on the road? Apple Oasis. Okay. We're in the theoretical here. I mean, I, I, I'm not a Peloton employee. I, I don't have a badge. I'm thinking through the possible scenarios that they're at least examining and may be pursuing Apple Oasis. What has not been a big hit for Apple? I, I follow Apple. I'm an investor in Apple. Um, have been for decades, to be completely honest. Um, on the analyst calls, Tim and Luca and everyone else, they, they speak exhaustively about all the products they have. The phones, the iPads, the Macs, their service revenues for like micropayments and things like that. What they, and, and I can say this pretty dogmatically, what they never talk about is their fitness product, Fitness Plus. Apple's had a number of failures. We're, we're aware of the failures that they have had. Uh, certainly, largely success, but no, no company has a perfect record. People I've talked to with Fitness Plus are not excited about it. The reviews are average, and it's just simply not mentioned. It's part of the bundle with arcade and news and music and some storage space on their servers. What if... Peloton could say, Apple, let's replace Fitness Plus with Peloton Plus. Let, let's let's form a true partnership, and let's 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 get your people involved because we have the number one de facto platform for fitness content content on the planet, bar none. Could this be an avenue for them? Could Apple recognize, as they have recognized their other failures, could they recognize that Fitness Plus is going nowhere? They don't know what to do with it. Now, we know the AR, VR glasses and, and things of that nature. A Apple is very heavily invested in health, the, the backbone of health with their Apple Watch and also with medical records and things like that they've done uh, items with. So they're very invested in health, but they're not getting any movement on actual physical participation from members of the Apple ecosystem. Certainly, Barry and Peloton would be interested in this. Is it going to happen? Probably not. And I, I'm I'm completely against or disagree with any any buyout scenarios. But a, a partnership like this, could Apple just simply resign and say Fitness Plus was a failure? Let's bring Peloton on the platform and still use our Apple Watch, still track metrics. Apple loves data as much as Peloton does, if not more. Apple Oasis. Let's visit our next stop. Let's keep driving the car. House of Mouse and Netflix for Nirvana. Again, we're talking digital first. Barry's hardware is not in his DNA. It's not what wakes him up in the morning. Could there be, in addition to Apple Fitness Plus, could there be a more perfect partnership than somehow getting a Netflix channel? We have the kids. If you open up Netflix, you kind of have the kids channel and you have the adult channel. And then, I mean, you could drill into rom-coms and horror flicks and action flicks and things like that nature. What if Netflix had a health or a fitness channel? 
would they try to do their own? Netflix obviously is producing content on their own. Would they try to produce health content? I, I think the odds are pretty low. Um, it's been proven to be a very hard nut to crack. And Disney. Wouldn't it be amazing if Barry could somehow swing Peloton channels on both these platforms? Again, very little investment from his part. He's just collecting sub-revenue. We're, we're on the road to 100 million subscribers. How do we get there? We're talking to people like Apple. We're talking to people like Netflix. We're talking to people like Disney. We're opening the platform. We're taking the closed ecosystem, which Peloton has been since day one. And very, very slowly opening it up. Whether you're in favor of it or not in favor of it, that's a different discussion. We're examining the possibilities, the potentials. This is... I would think a potential if they're not considering this, I, you know, we're, we're going to visit lots of stops on our trip today. You got to think they're visiting at least some of these. All right. After House of Mouse and Netflix for Nirvana. Hardware falls. All right. This, this we know. We've, we're looking at things up, up until now. We've kind of visited sites where we're upping subscriptions somewhat dramatically hardware falls is a bit taking us back perhaps not off subscriptions but it is taking a little of the luster off the peloton brand because again digital first barry has not been a fan of hardware we have the bike we have the treadmill we've got a couple of variants but we've got the bike in the in the treadmill it's got dangerous currents here. Barry's very uncomfortable with hardware. It's not his background. His background is, is Netflix. His background is Spotify. His background is not asking suppliers to produce nuts and bolts. So hardware falls is representational of taking hardware and spinning it off completely into private label. Still, it's Peloton brand, but Peloton currently is using Rexon to produce, Rexon and now Pegatron for the rower um, to produce all these units, and he shuttered everything else. We, we talked about the, the pre-core shuttering, Peloton output shuttering, the tonic fitness shuttering. Barry's not interested. What if he just abandons it entirely and still has design people in-house designing the next rower, designing the next treadmill, designing the next bike, but exiting hardware completely and simply private labeling, someone else produce these units. We are interested in 100 million subs. That is going to get us more than enough revenue, more than enough stock increase to get us where we want to go. So they could obviously continue to produce these bikes and, and have lit supplier management people on site and quality control people on the payroll and things of that nature. But if you go full on into digital first and don't take any path, any side road outside digital, this, this has to go. Hardware has to go. You have to just outsource it 100% other than possibly design. What's your next stop? I'm getting hungry. Hopefully it's not with food. The, um, okay, Den of Iniquity. Now we're getting into interesting. We, we're, we're in troubled waters here. We were in troubled waters with Hardware Falls. We're in troubled waters with Din and Nickety because this is going to upset the OGs of Peloton, the hardcore fanatics of Peloton. And again, I'm not saying I'm for it or against it in, in this discussion we're having today. I'm saying it's a possibility. In the Den of Iniquity, we've got Hulu here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but we've got Hulu, Netflix, of course we have we have Almighty Peloton, Twitch, YouTube, Prime. What we're talking about here is taking the closed app on your bike, on your treadmill, and doing what Echelon and Bowflex and Nordic Track and every other hardware connected fitness device manufacturer is doing and saying, use our app, which happens to be just an app icon, but we're giving you an, a fully functional Android tablet on your hardware fitness device. And if you don't want to watch our Nordic Track content, if you'd prefer to go to Hulu and watch 
whatever Hulu has, to be honest, I, don't, I have no idea. But uh, you go to YouTube and you can watch your favorite videos on YouTube while you cycle or while you run. Is Peloton finally ready? And again, I'm not making a judgment call, good or bad. But with a closed ecosystem, unless you're Apple and can swing the Thor hammer that Apple has, and Peloton's not there. Could you just say, we've got world-class content, but we acknowledge that there are other people on the planet outside of Peloton fans, the hardcore fans, and we want to provide avenues for them to pursue what they view as enjoyable. Putting bikes on Amazon could be argued as, as part of that. Peloton has always said buy it from onepeloton.com or one of our retail stores or don't buy it at all. Now they've acknowledged that, well, acknowledge and or was necessary. They've put it on the Amazon store. And now potentially they're going to find a whole variety of more people outside circles of the Venn diagram that they can find. And some of those people may not be up for Alex or Christine to tell them what to do on the bike or Adrian to tell them what to do for their strength exercises or Matt, God bless Matt. Who doesn't like uh, Wilpers content? I mean, stream it 24 seven in my house, but some people are just going to want to watch YouTube, Twitch, Netflix. This has to be around the corner, right? If you're embracing digital first, you've got to open up the portals to other content. Your content is still king. Your content will still have a higher place than all these others. It will boot to Peloton. But Pel is Peloton acknowledging that they are not the Lord and Savior of all content, that there is other content there available that people can enjoy on their own at their own decision? Certainly for OGs, this would be the den of iniquity. All right, we're about halfway through our road trip here. Next is the Oprah Bazaar. Bazaar meaning the plaza, the open area of exchanging goods. What does Oprah have for us? Here it is. And this has been, some of these have already been hinted at, some, some not as much or not at all. Peloton platform is king. The content, the, the platform, the application the fitness application, the hardware application that resides on your bike or on your treadmill and soon to be your rower. This has been hinted at that Barry and Peloton are interested in simply licensing the Peloton, I'm going to call it the Peloton Plus, the Peloton Plus platform. And if, again, if you look at some of the internal hiring data, they, they, they view the platform as a product. And I think that's foreshadowing what we may see in the Oprah Bazaar, but Echelon, you get Peloton Plus. Nordic Track, you get Peloton Plus. Proform, the commercial folks, you Proform, you Life Fitness folks, you get Peloton Plus. Pay us a nice little stipend, a nice little uh, licensing fee, and you can just get rid of your content. Where's the camera? Content. Because again, content on these platforms is not excelling. I'm not going to say it's garbage. I, I, I have not used all these things. I'm sure some content is better than others, but there's one acknowledged king. And so Peloton can simply open it up. Peloton Plus is now available for any fitness platform provided you send Peloton a check for every piece of hardware you sell. And that is Oprah just giving it away. That was a nice place to visit. There's, there's a lot of potential there. I'm Again, I'm not making arguments for good or bad. I'm making arguments for Barry's digital first approach and the meetings that they're having that I haven't been invited to. What do we have next? All right. Uh, then of iniquity, the Oprah Bazaar, the land of vacancy. It is a desolate land indeed. And I've spoken to this. I spoke with uh, Dr. David Miller the other day about it on my channel. And that is the commercial avenue. Commercial Avenue is empty. It's void of all Peloton equipment. They're nearly void of all Peloton equipment. They have largely not succeeded in breaking the commercial equipment area. They, they bought Precor, but, and they said on the call 
I can tell you what they said on the analyst call the other day, the ER call. They said it's we're up 35% year over year. No one asked a follow-up question. I don't know what that means. Up 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 35 up 35 percent over one unit is 1.3 units. So we're not exactly, you know, it, it's not time to buy everyone um, uh, a Panera Bread lunch. We've got struggles ahead, and I think all of us who've been to any, you know, Planet Fitness or Orange Theory or what have you, we're not seeing Peloton machines. We're seeing them uh, in hotels and uh, in that type of. Uh, in the in that type of industry, the consumer facing industry, but we're not really seeing a whole lot of breaking ground in the commercial area. But again, digital first, hardware, either third party, private label, what have you, Peloton needs to get their application in front of consumers because we have found out over the last year and a half that not everyone wants to work out from home. They want to work out from gyms. And if Peloton can't break the physical barrier to providing physical equipment and gyms. They need to break the Peloton Plus platform on other equipment to get subs toward that 100 million goal into commercials. And right now it is a land of vacancy. It's just, it's it's not there. We're 35% year over year of something. If I was an analyst on that call, trust me, I, I would have nailed them down to 35% of what, Barry and Liz? There we go. Insurance Inferno. This is this is one of the things that just drives me nuts. I'm going to spend very few moments on this because I, I could go on and on and on. The nine circles of hell in the Insurance Inferno and the actuaries who run it. We talked about Peloton's inability to break the commercial sector. They certainly been equally not capable of breaking the nine circles of hell of insurance and actuaries. And that is all most of our insurance products have a bucket that you can spend to to help your health. But we want and this is where I'm going to insert a personal opinion. We want Peloton to be a named entity on insurance policies. We want not just a bucket so I can go out and I can buy some fitness bands and that counts as $70 out of my $100 a month. I can buy fitness bands. And I, no, 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 no. You can buy, we're decreasing your bucket allowance to $25, but we're giving you a pro bono Peloton subscription as part of Acme Insurance. What am I going to choose? Am I going to choose a little bucket where I can kind of piecemeal something together and go to a gym and maybe get the membership there? Or am I going to go to something that's named with far more accessibility and options for me? Peloton needs to be a named item on insurance. And uh, as much as they have struggled with commercial, I would say they have struggled even more with the insurance inferno. Let's keep going down the road. Getting toward the end of the track, summing these up, hopefully somewhere we're going to find 100 million subs at the end of the rainbow. I don't know if we are or not. We only have one stop left. We'll look at this when we're done. We'll see where we are. We're at Moaning Myrtle's mandate. Moaning Myrtle, not a pleasant character. Not someone you necessarily want to run into. It's going to be not popular amongst a lot of people. Um, and again, not making declarations whether this is good or bad. Not even going to mention pandemic stuff. Health is an issue across the board. I think in every nation, obesity is up. Illness is up. And every nation in their own way is tackling targeted specific items. We're going to, we're going to help with this illness. We're going to help with this illness. We're going to provide funding to research this illness. Uh, we'll provide vaccinations or shots or what have you for this item. But one of the core, as we all know, it's just common sense. 
and you can read studies. And I'm, I'm not going to pretend. I'm, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert here. But let's just go with a the theme. Someone's health, the underlying probability of being healthy or not, or acquiring an illness or not, generally diminishes if you are healthier overall. If you are thinner, if you are fitter, if your heart is in a better condition, your cardio abilities are better. Are we far off? And Peloton has lobbyists in Washington. So do many of the other fitness firms. But Peloton has, has lobbyists. It's, it's, uh, it's out there for you to research. They have lobbyists in Washington. How far are we from tackling the underlying item for preventative maintenance, and that is health, and mandating that the public do or subscribe to do certain things for themselves in order to avoid more costly expenses down the road. We talk about commercial being difficult, and we talk about insurance being difficult. Uh, whether we're talking about the IHS or, or here in America, um, our, our health industry and the, and the government side, this is, this is Herculean. But we're talking subs here overnight of the population of a nation, give or take. How far are our mandates eventually going to come? Are they realistic? I'm sure Peloton would love them. I'm sure uh, Echelon would love them. I'm sure Apple in some ways would love them. And it would be better off for all of us in, in some fashion. Again, you know, government, I'm not going to get into big government argument. But the mandate overnight, 100 million subs. Or less, if you talk about other nations adopting a health, a preventive health policy that include connected fitness equipment and or the Peloton Plus application. And that finally brings us to the pot of gold at the end of the road. So let's kind of go through these. Amazon Acres, they'll get a few more subs right there. There's obviously some cannibalization happening with OnePeloton.com and Amazon. But they didn't do it to not sell more bikes. They did it to sell more bikes and to sell their digital platform. Rolling out the digital app. Globally, a lot more subs. So now we're not talking about connected fitness subs. The forty-four dollars a month. We're talking the twelve ninety-nine people. So you you got to up the game a little bit to make that revenue target. But again, the world is a big place outside of the four or five regions that Peloton covers. Apple Fitness this would be a huge win. I mean, they wouldn't see like uh, I'm envisioning they wouldn't see the direct subscription revenue. Maybe I don't know. It, it's probably you know Apple and Peloton just kind of work something out. As part of the Apple's, well, I think it's like four nine nine or five nine 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 a bundle. I don't know, and I'm sure Pelton just would simply get a piece, and Apple can finally say, "Our washed up old icky product can go away, and we're going to have Pelton on the platform, and we're we're going to get all of us are going to be happier at the end of the day." The House of Mouse and Netflix, Vana providing channels, health channels, with the Pelton platform, beautiful subs galore. Right there again, maybe not direct one-to-one -one sub feedback, but they get to tick that amount up from where they are now. They're about three million hardware subs and about one million digital subs, so four million. Each one of these is kind of ticking that lever up to one extent or another. Are we getting closer to 100 million? We're not getting further. Hardware falls. This is an unpleasant area. For a lot of people. Does it take away from digital first strategy? Or does it add to the digital strategy? I think it simply coincides with the digital strategy. Pleasant or unpleasant, what have you. Den of iniquity, adding all these platforms, YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, opening up the Peloton app to other things. I think you're going to see a little more uptick in... in I don't think you're going to see people leaving the platform because YouTube's not available. The OGs won't like it, but they're not going to say, because YouTube is now a selectable icon or menu item, I'm leaving Peloton. I don't think you're going to see a falling off of, from the roles. 
you're going to see an incremental add-on. This is not going to kind of jump them up from 20 to 40 million. This is, this is, it simply broadens their TAM potentially a little bit. The Oprah Bazaar putting Peloton Plus on other hardware. Yeah, that's going to tick up a little bit. That means you don't have to, if for every fitness piece of hardware sold, even if it's not Peloton, subs can tick up. Now, obviously, there's uh, there's some barriers to Echelon saying, we're going to put Peloton Plus on our bikes. And simply, we're going to find areas of differentiation, and we're going to sell the same content, but our bikes are going to be, or our equipment is going to be different somehow. I mean, they have things like ellipticals and, and stair masters and things that Peloton is simply just never going to make. Um, so there's a, t there's a tick there in the Oprah Bazaar. The, the land of vacancy and the insurance inferno. These are areas that can be expanded that simply are not. Um, again, these lend themselves toward digital upticks, whether they will or not. I, you know, Peloton has not found the, the magic bullet for these yet. Will they? I don't know. And then Moaning Myrtle's mandate for government. Ay, ay, ay. Whether that comes or not, I think we are talking years, 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 years down the road in the U.S. And who knows overseas? I certainly don't know. We travel this entire road. If we hit seven out of ten spots, skip three, are we close to 100 million? I guess it depends on what you skip and what you visit. But man, 100 million subs, that's big. And that's, that's their stated goal. I mean, 50 million subs would be great. 10 million subs would be great. Do we get to 100 million at some point in the future? Is it conceivable? With a digital first attitude, you know, personally, I, I'll insert my personal opinion at the end of this video. I like Peloton branded Peloton hardware. If I see it being manufactured by a third party and just happens to have the Peloton tag on it, but that manufacturer is also making the same echelon bike. It does kind of take a little wind out of my sails, but we'll see. So anyway, so that was our road today. Just kind of a, a thought experiment for all, all to visit. I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll talk to you next time.